Welcome to this exploration of the Korg PA800 Professional Arranger. Whether you're a beginner or an accomplished musician, the PA800 has an amazing array of features to help you sound great right from the start. Korg's Professional Arranger is a completely self-contained musical instrument which is designed to adapt to your musical needs. It combines the musical power of a Korg synthesizer with superb accompaniment styles which work as your backing band literally following the chords that you play. And that's just the start of the story. Add to this two onboard sequences, a huge range of production tools and a market leading voice processor and the PA800 shapes up as a complete music workstation. During this exploration we'll look at the basic operation of the PA800, how to set up sounds and performances, how to get the best out of the complement styles, playing standard MIDI file songs, the voice processor and the fantastic songbook feature. We'll also look at the sequencer and some exciting extras and support facilities. It's a good idea to watch the whole presentation through at first. It'll give you a good grounding in what the PA800 has to offer. Then later you can review different sections as you try those features on the instrument. Before we start, we suggest checking that your PA800 is updated to the latest version of its operating system. You can find details of this at www.corgpa.com. This will ensure that your PA800 is working in exactly the same way as mine and with all of the same feature enhancements. You'll find the PA800 very easy to use thanks to its intuitive panel layout. All of the buttons you need frequently are located very conveniently and in logical sections. We'll look at those shortly, but first let's look at the most important feature on the front panel. The color touch view screen makes the PA800 just about the easiest arranger keyboard to use ever. You'll find that you can do most things you need in a live situation with just the screen. It's best to touch the screen with the tip of your finger rather than the pad, but you'll find you soon get used to it and that operating the PA800 is quick and easy. There are some useful things to learn about using the screen which will help greatly in later chapters. The first thing to make sure is that the screen contrast is set correctly for you. Just go ahead and press the menu button and turn the tempo value dial until the screen is clear and sharp. First of all, some of the functions in the screen can be adjusted using the tempo value dial or for finer adjustments, the plus and minus buttons. For example, just touch the tempo field and turn the dial. You would also adjust the volume level of the various parts on the PA800 using this method. Just touch a volume fader and then adjust that with the tempo value dial or maybe just with the plus and minus buttons for finer control. You can also enter numbers such as tempo using a pop-up calculator. Just touch the function twice, enter the value you want in the calculator and touch OK. At the bottom of the home screen you'll see a series of tabs that change what is in the lower part of the screen. This system is continued through the various menus we'll look at later. In the top right of the screen, there's a pull-down menu which is mainly concerned with writing various data. As we look at various features, you'll see that this pull-down menu becomes available when you need to store something you've been working on. In some cases, you'll need to name something that you've created. We'll look at programming processes later, but for now, I want to show you how to write a name. I'm going to select Write Performance and then touch the T icon for text. It's very similar typing a name using a little QWERTY keyboard, but if you prefer you can change the letter layout to alphabetical. You'll find not only that the letter layout changes, but there are some different symbols available in each mode. Whichever you prefer, when you've finished, just touch OK. Some features such as sequence editing or song loading, right here, 
we'll need to show a list of items. And often, of course, the list is longer than what can be displayed on the screen at once. So in these cases, a scroll bar will appear on the right of the screen. You can simply scroll up and down that list. The Touch View screen is also used for one of the most important functions on the PA800. That's to select which of the four keyboard parts is playing. This is done using the channel strips here. And we'll look at this in much more detail in Chapter 3. And the last two very important buttons concerned with the screen are Display Hold and Exit. Now many of the pages you get down into, so if I was to select this one here, will automatically exit back to the main page if you haven't selected anything for about 10 seconds. Just watch for it. There you go. Go straight back there. Now to stop it from doing that, you can go ahead and press Display Hold, and that will stay on here indefinitely. Alternatively, to exit back onto the main page, simply press Exit. As we progress, each chapter will deal with different features and different buttons. At the beginning of each chapter, we'll highlight the main buttons used for that feature. But as you get to know the PA800, you'll find that you can do most things just with the touch view screen. If at any time you find the home screen a little bit too busy for you, just touch the pull down menu at the top right hand corner of the screen and select Easy Mode. The screen will change to a much simpler layout. The back panel features audio outputs, including left and right, and two assignable outputs, plus audio inputs for a microphone or other source. There are several options for foot controllers, including the most basic one, which is a damper pedal, essential for authentic piano performances, an assignable pedal, and the Korg EC5 multi-switch pedal board. MIDI ports are added to by a USB device port for connection to a computer. This is known as USB to MIDI and you'll need to install a driver on your PC or Mac to make this connection. This is provided on the accessory CD-ROM supplied with a PA800 or you can download the latest version free at www.corgpa.com. There's also a USB host port for connecting a mass storage device such as a USB flash drive, floppy disk or CD drive. There's also a very conveniently located USB host port on the front right key cheek, making it very easy to use a USB memory device. The PA800 has several different modes of use, as an arranger keyboard, a MIDI file player, a sequencer with full editing, and a synthesizer. The mode button set which way the instrument is working. So for example, to play back a MIDI file song, you'd select Song Play Mode. For each mode, there is a menu of functions, so to make detailed adjustments for the mode that you're in, just press the Menu button. As you can see, there are different menus depending on what mode you're in. If you enjoy playing live, then probably you'll be using the Style Play mode the most, which is the default mode when you turn the power on. Now, one more button to experiment with is the Shift button. Very often this acts as a shortcut to a programming feature. Just press and hold down Shift and press any other button on the panel, and you'll very often find a menu open up connected to that function without having to search through the menus to find it. That's our overview of the PA800 done. Let's get down to some details. The PA800 sounds are grouped by instrument type, allowing you to find what you're looking for quickly and easily. There are two simple ways to select sounds on the PA800. The first using the buttons on the front panel, and the second using just the screen. Let's look at the panel method first. The buttons used for the sound selection are actually dual purpose, working with either sounds or with performance memories. We'll look at performance memories shortly, so at first let's go ahead and press the sound select button on the front panel. Now to browse for a sound, simply press the category button that closely describes the sound that you're looking for and a list of available sounds will appear on the screen. 
For example, if I was looking for a vibraphone sound, I'd go ahead and press the mallet and bell button. I'm going to switch on display hold to stop the sound select screen from exiting automatically. To select a sound, just touch the name of the sound on the screen. And of course, there are many more sounds that can be displayed on just one page. So at the bottom of the screen, there are several tabs, each with up to eight more sounds on each tab. Now the number of sounds in each category varies widely, but the system of stepping through the different tabs, this one has even more tabs, so you can use this guy through here, is the same. You'll also find that you can advance through the tabs by pressing the sound select button on the panel repeatedly. Take some time to explore the huge range of sounds available. It's fun to do and you'll discover which are your favourites for the future. You can see that after pressing the sound select buttons on the panel, everything is done using the screen. Well, it's also possible to do this entire procedure using just the screen. Let me just exit out of this back to our main page. Just touch the upper one sound field once, and the screen will jump to the sound select page for the currently selected instrument. Now, on the left and the right of the screen, you'll find tabs that let you jump to other sound groups. And the great thing is that you can browse through other sound groups while you are still playing the sound that you had selected. So here's our piano sound. And I can go through here. I'm still hearing the piano. And the sound won't actually change until you select the next one. So far I've just been playing one sound, but actually the PA-800 can layer three sounds together and you can split the keyboard and use a different sound again to the left of the split. In PA-800 language, these four parts, the upper one, two and three, and the lower, are called real-time tracks. As we progress through this tutorial, we'll discover that there are real-time tracks, style tracks, and sequencer tracks, but as the name implies, real-time tracks are for live performance. First of all, let's go ahead and layer two sounds together, such as a piano and strings. Select piano in the upper one track, just as we did before. We'll exit out of that. And let's go ahead and unmute the upper two track and select a string ensemble sound. I'll go through to the strings. Movie strings one will do fine. 